Okay, so now we need to look at enamines plus acid chlorides. So let's once again, let's start with making our enamine. Enamines again start with a carbonyl compound, aldehyde or ketone, typically a ketone, plus a secondary amine. We'll do this in an alcohol solvent, some solvent. And we'll lose water, and that gives us the enamine. Now we will treat this, so let's make that step one. Step two, we're going to treat with an acid chloride. In this reaction, this carbonyl is an electrophile, and the enamine is a strong enough nucleophile to attack that carbonyl. Um, not at the nitrogen, but the, the nitrogen activates the double bond to attack the carbon-carbon double bond. If we trace all of our arrows, we will see that we get this as our product. We actually have attack on a carbonyl. This is formerly a tetrahedral intermediate. When we make tetrahedral intermediates, first we look for a leaving group. We have one as a chloride. So let's go ahead and eject that chloride. And now we're left with this positively charged thing. Normally in this reaction, this, this, this is an aminium ion, not a thing, it's an aminium ion. Um, whatever the solvent is with this acid chloride in step two, and we haven't specified what it is, but there's something in there that can act as a base and will actually deprotonate this hydrogen and neutralize our enamine. And that is particularly favorable in this case, because once we put this double bond in place, now we have lots of resonance. So this nitrogen lone pair is in resonance with a double bond, which is in resonance with the carbonyl. So it connects everything. Um, and many ions aren't always deprotonated, but when they have a carbonyl next door, they quickly get deprotonated. Now this is this is just an enamine. It's a little bit of a special enamine, but if you take this and treat it with water, and you might need to throw in a little acid in this case, but enamines in general react with water to hydrolyze and reveal the original carbonyl. And uh, not to forget it, but we did we do get our secondary amine back that we put in in the first step. So this is this is a pathway to make what they call one three. diketones, and they're also similar compounds, but this specifically makes a 1,3-diketone. And we call it a 1,3-diketone because the two ketones are in a 1,3 relative position. Um, that's not necessarily your, I, your IUPAC naming numbering, but the relative position is 1,3. And as it turns out, these are a fairly useful class of compounds to be able to access. And we can do it through using uh, the reaction of an enamine as a nucleophile on an acid chloride.